Hi, this is a lecture taken from my online course about the Apache Spark certification, which is offered by Databricks. It handles one of the topics that you need to understand in order to get certified. So check it out. A data frame has a schema that defines the name and the data type of the columns. And to view the schema of a data frame, you use the print schema method. So customer data frame dot print schema. And this will show us the schema of the data frame in a nicely printed form. What we can do here, we know that in our file, the address ID is not that large. So the long type is too much and we can fix that by specifying the schema of the data frame. To specify the schema of a data frame, we have two options. The first one is what we called a data definition language formatted string. A data definition language formatted string is something like this. So it is a string that contains the name and the the name of the columns and their data type. What we will do, we will go there, specify the name of the column and then the data type and so on and so on. So let's see how to do that in Apache Spark. To create a data definition language format a string, we will create a variable. We'll call that variable customer df schema underscore ddl. Now open the code and specify the name of each of each column. In our case, we know that the address ID should not be a long type anymore, but an integer. And this is exactly what I'm going to do. And then we specified also the birth country, which is a string. And we have to do that for all the columns that are available inside our file. So I'll post the video here, type everything in and then come back. This is our string. We can see the address ID as integer. I even specified the birth date with the data type date because as you can see here, the birth date is represented as a string. And you can see this is a date, but here it is specified as string. That's why while specifying the manual schema, you should also add the correct data type in there. Now let's execute that. And now you have a nice string available to us. To apply the schema, we must go up here and then say dot schema. And then just specify the name. And this time, while creating the customer data frame, Apache Spark will use the name of the columns and the specified data types. So let me do that. And we can take a look into the customer data frame again. Run schema. And if you now, so this is the old version and this is the new version. Now you can see that the address ID is an integer and the birth date is a date instead of a string. The second way to specify the schema of a data frame is to use the struct type. Let me show you what I mean by that. If you take the data frame itself, there is a property there called the schema. Let me execute that. And you can see this returns the schema not in the form of a string, but in the form of a Apache Spark struct type, where you can see that the struct type contains fields where you have the name of the column and the Apache Spark type, and also if the column can contain null value or not. This flag here is just for Apache Spark to optimize the source code, so it doesn't really matter. You can still have null values inside a field where the null flag is false, for example. So instead of creating the schema like this, we can also create a struct type and assign it to the data frame reader. Let's see how to do that. To define the schema as a struct type, I'll insert a new cell, create a new variable called customer df schema, 
stroke type equal i'll just paste the information here and explain you what is happening here a stroke type is a collection of stroke fields and each field has a name of the column and the data type and also a flag if the value inside the column can be null or not and that's it we can then even define stroke type inside stroke type for example we have a column named demographic which in turn is also a stroke type and it also contains an array of fields and one of the fields can even be an array so another complex type you can see that behavior down here where inside the demographic column you can see the data and an array so i go up here and then execute this value stroke type not found to be able to use stroke type we must import some apache spark packages so let's say import org.apache.spark dot sql dot types we import everything and now execute the cell again now this create our schema in the form of a stroke type we can then use this one again here and specify it like that so what i can do here i can comment out this and do schema as you can see it really doesn't matter if you pass in the ddl formatted string or the stroke type and now execute that and we can take a look into the schema again for a third time customer df dot schema dot print schema now you can see the address id is integer the birth date went from string to date and also the customer id was changed The third way to handle schema in Apache Spark is by letting Apache Spark define the schema for us. But for that, we must pass an option to the data frame reader to let it infer the schema for us. We can go up here and then do something like this. Option, infer schema, and then say true. What will then happen is that Apache Spark will read a portion of our data and then try to define the right data type for each column remember that when you do infer schema it also has some performance cost because an additional amount of data must first be read to determine the schema and then the data must be read in a second turn but anyhow for production application always specify the schema manually because even infer schema cannot find out if a value is an integer type or if it is a long type one important thing before going into the exam is to know how to read the documentation of Apache spark we've learned how to use the data frame reader to load a json file next we will see what are the other options available on the data frame reader itself and where to find the syntax of all the options available and to do that, we go to the Apache Spark page and under documentation, we pick the latest release, the API documentation, which is Scala in our case. And from here, we can then search for the data frame reader and tools the data frame reader. From here, you can see all the members Previously, we used the format method to read a JSON file. If you scroll down here, you can also see that you can. there's also a function available called JSON that allows us to read a JSON file directly without specifying the format manually as with this member. For example, one question in the exam could be, does the format method also take a second argument? And if you don't know that right, you can easily go into the documentation and then find out what is the real syntax of the format function for example 
down here you can see how you can load the data directly so it's quite important in the exam to know where to find help and what is the type of argument that each method will take for example previously we also saw that we can specify options like infer a schema and this is where you will find the definition of something like that here you can see option infer a schema and then you specify the value in our case we said infer a schema true so make yourself comfortable with documentation and during the exam you will be able to find what you need if you enjoy this video i think you will also like the entire course the course covers all the topics you need to pass the exam such as understanding the basic of the apache spark architecture how to manipulate columns in a data frame how to filter columns or rows from a data frame it also covers how to work with user defined function and spark sql functions the course contains over four and a half hours of video and you will also get a databricks notebook that you can import directly into a databricks workspace so easily follows all the instruction and all the code exercise it also contains more than 40 quizzes that will help you prepare for the exam so use the link in the description below to join the course and get certified thank you